Well, I think we're all faced with uh, some pretty big challenges right now. If you, if you think about the rapid change in technology that's going on, the increasing reliance that uh, our agencies and departments have on technology, and you couple that with the challenges we have in recruiting and retaining our workforce, uh, being able to manage kind of our existing environments while we continue to look for ways to innovate and move our state governments forward. I think it's a, it is a pretty big challenge and I think uh, as we're here at NASIO, you see how similar those trends and concerns are amongst all the states. So as we were looking at that during the course of last year and now into, into this year, I think what we've really been able to do is to create what some people call that bimodal organization so that you can have a good piece of your organization and those resources thinking about moving faster, thinking about being more innovative and creative, being more open to different types of partnerships that maybe an organization, organizations like ours haven't had in the past. And so we've been able to do that with a number of programs, uh, a big pipeline of kind of innovative projects, uh, and a cultural change in our organization that says, we just have to be more nimble and faster to be able to deliver what our agencies need to move them ahead. Well, I, again, it, it, you know, as a, as a CIO in an organization uh, like the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, again, it's all about balance. We really need to stay focused on what I always call the blocking and tackling of technology in organizations like ours. How do we make sure that the responsiveness and the availability of our systems that everybody relies on to deliver services to our constituency Everybody needs those things now. We've got to keep getting better at it. Better at it meaning more professional at it. Better at it meaning more cost effective at how we deliver those services. How we start integrating some of the new technology so that we can just be better at the, at the core service delivery of IT. Uh, and then the, at the same time, you know, how do we start delivering new things? How do we uh, work with our peers, work with our partners to find new ways to do things across the organization? So as we've looked at, at doing those things, uh, we've seen a very different brand of IT organization uh, in the Commonwealth. An organization that's not kind of, you know, marginalized over into fixing computers and, and making sure that projects get done, but an organization that's sitting at the table with the business of, of government to move it forward. So for us, on, on one side, a big uh, priority for us is to just run projects better. How do we gain credibility within IT that shows that the Commonwealth is getting value from the IT dollars that it invests? And in our world, what that means is the development of an enterprise uh, program management office that makes sure that every project that we identify is worthy of funding by taxpayer dollars. And then once we approve it for funding, that we're gonna manage it and run it professionally, that we're gonna deliver on time, that we're gonna deliver on budget. So that is priority number one for us. And part of it, again, is to just kind of rebuild the credibility that an IT organization has to have in an organization like ours. I think the second priority for us is to get better at data. I mean, if you sit at a conference like this, you hear that every state is dealing with the same issue. Many of us have places in our organizations where there's good activities and expertise around data, but most of us don't have that enterprise view. How does, a, how does an organization like ours really think about all the issues associated with managing data better, sharing data more effectively, because an organization that becomes data savvy is really gonna find ways to deliver services better to their constituents. So we're spending a lot of time on the policy side of that. What do we need? Do we need an executive order, uh, the uh, sharing agreements? What do we need to put in place so that agencies can more effectively share information with each other? And how do we create the technology platforms and the expertise so that when people start giving us data from various agencies, how do we pull it together and really start seeing what the benefit of seeing cross-agency data can, what, what those views and what those visualizations can do to just help us get better at it. So 
We have to run projects better. We have to get better at data. And I think the other thing that organizations like ours have as a priority is how do we improve the interface between our constituents and state government? How do, you know, I came from, uh, my background before I came to the Commonwealth was at the city of Boston. We had tremendous success at citizen engagement. How do we start thinking about state, uh, city government at that point, and how do we engage better? How do we leverage the new tools? It's about open data, it's about mobile applications, it's about creating new channels of engagement. And what we're doing at the Commonwealth now is we're increasing our focus on that seam between our constituent and state government. You know, our constituents are used to digital services that they get from the private sector. That's a high bar for state government to think about. How can we create that same look and feel? How do we, how do we get focused on the usability of the products that we develop? And how do we encourage our constituents to connect with us as a digital business? Uh, so those are the three things that come up on, on our list. It's, it's managing those big projects and making sure that folks have comfort that we're getting value for the dollar. It's getting better at data across the enterprise. And it's thinking about how do we improve our engagement and our front end to the constituents. I mean, it's hard because again, those things kind of fall into that category of how do we get faster? How do we get more open and more collaborative in the world of new technologies. We're really good at the traditional ways to kind of modernize systems and do those kinds of things. We're not quite as good on this new seam. So what we have done is, again, focused our organization to think about ways that we can create new types of partnerships. How do we engage with the new ideas? How do we engage with the new companies? How do we engage with the new technologies? Uh, one of the interesting things we did uh, for the first time last year is, in Massachusetts, we have a, uh, a competition called Mass Challenge. And what Mass Challenge does is it recruits early stage companies into a competition. Uh, they provide some pretty serious funding for the entities that get through this competition successfully and they get prizes awarded. Well, we jumped onto the Mass Challenge project last year for, for really one big reason. And it's to address the issue of introducing ourselves to these new ideas and these new technologies in a way that state government doesn't normally do. So we put together a uh, Massachusetts uh, Civic Innovation Prize and we attached it to this mass challenge process. So there were already 128 companies that had been vetted by mass challenge. So we added on to that our prize and we had uh, almost 30 of those companies come and apply for the Civic Innovation Prize. And that accomplished two things for us. One is it required those companies, in addition to thinking about what the private sector might do with their products, to think about what could the public sector do with their products? Could they look at these new ideas, these new products they had, and think about how that might help solve problems in government? And on our side, it made our team open the door to a bunch of new companies that they wouldn't see through the standard procurement process. So we were able to have conversations, get pitches from these companies. We ended up giving it to, uh, giving our prize to two different companies. One was in the security space. The other uh, provided, uh, they're really in the data space, but what they did is they have created an appliance that you now can insert into any vehicle and it gathers all the data that goes on throughout a motor vehicle, a truck, or a car. Uh, so we were able to pick those two, introduce us to a couple new technologies that we wouldn't have found in another way, and be able to pilot and prototype some of the thing, these things in our environment. So again, uh, helps us try to keep up with this incredible pace of change. So as Internet of Things, and just thinking about sensors around transportation and parking, and some of the other kind of embedded technologies that are coming down the road, we're starting to create a little bit of expertise on our side as to how do we engage with these folks with these technologies and then how do we handle the procurement and the contracting, all those challenging things that, that happen to people in state government. Well, I think this is gonna be a, a never-ending battle for all of us. Uh, and I think the only way that we keep up uh, in this uh, battle 
is uh, by partnering and collaborating. So a key focus in Massachusetts has been to identify all of the other parties involved at various levels of government, in the private sector, in academia, that are all looking to defend against the emerging threats that are coming out. And those threats are increasing in complexity and they're increasing in volume. So uh, a big focus for us is to develop some discipline around that data sharing. So I would say that one of our big successes has been uh, creating governance, creating relationships, so that whether it's uh, federal entities, other state entities, our folks in public safety, our folks in national defense, everybody comes together in a really positive way now to share information because that is our only, none of us can do this on our own. So our successes are really gonna be due to our ability to create those partnerships. And we have a chief information security officer in Massachusetts that kind of leads our charge on those partnerships. And the other part of that is that we've given more responsibility to our chief information security officer. Security is one area where it is very difficult to manage this in a decentralized way. To be able to protect yourself, you really need to invest your resources and create a center for excellence around security. And I think we've been successful in doing that. And I think the other part that's important for us is that the world of security is gonna change. All of our thoughts around security so far have been around perimeter defenses and intrusion detection and things like that. We have to all realize that understanding the data around security is going to be as important as building the firewalls and doing the uh, penetration testing on our systems. We'll need to continue to do all that, but we're also going to need to be able to be very sensitive to what we see, and it, it, it really is going to be a big data effort, and it really is going to require us to work closely with all these other partners that are in that space. Most people understand that you've probably been penetrated by malware and by other things, so how are we going to be able to look and see and, and, and look at trends and look at uh, activity that's going on and react to it more effectively. So the cyber challenge is going to continue. It's going to continue to get bigger. Uh, we need to continue to develop the expertise and again the partnerships and the relationships so that we can keep up. Uh, it's a lot easier to be a, a hacker on the outside than the defender on the inside, but uh, I think we are focused on it. Uh, we're going through a transition of administration. We're making sure that our new administration really understands the importance of this, and they do. Uh, so it will be, continue to be one of the top priorities for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts.